Hey everyone, this is Social Dissonance, also known as Shepard. Today I'm going to be doing a walkthrough of the various things you can do to get yourself prepared and familiar with the town in Monster Hunter Portable 3rd. So first off, we're going to go through the basic start menu. I'm going to do this out in the field because some more options become available when you're out there. I'm just doing a little gathering quest. And we're going to start with just the most basic explanations of all the things in that menu. So it should be... Pretty easy to follow along if you've played Monster Hunter games before, uh, but even if you haven't, then this should be a pretty good idea of what you need to do. Okay, so the first selection in the start menu, this is going to be your inventory. So selecting it, you're going to see all the various things in your item pouch. Um, many of you should be familiar with this if you have any Monster Hunter experience at all. A new addition to Monster Hunter Portable 3rd that you may not be aware of is that you actually get a fourth page when you're on quests. Now what this page is, is this is just an extra space in your inventory to put items in when you either you collect or gather for them. And then whenever the quest is completed, they get sent back to your box at the end of the quest. Uh, aside from that, whenever you select an item, the first choice is discard. The, uh, I believe it's either the second or third is give. And then the final one is just to rearrange the item in case you want to move it somewhere else. Okay, so back to the menu. The second choice down, this is the combine menu, so it can combine items in your pouch. So you can see here I've got an herb and a blue mushroom, so I combine them and I got a potion. Now only the items that are combinable will be highlighted here, so in general it's going to be a lot easier than having all the other items highlighted. I don't know how long it's been like that for. It's probably been like that for quite a while. But in any case, uh, you'll see some various things pop up when we do this. The top is the number of the item that you already have. The second is the combination percentage. And then, what is the bottom one again? Uh, the amount of the item that will end up being created. So if you're combining husk berries and needle berries, it'll show like two to four rather than just one. Okay, to make combining easier, a third menu option was added. Uh, this is essentially a combined catalog and you have it from the start shows all the combinable items in the game and it makes looking up something much easier. For the most part it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the only thing is is that if you don't have the item, if you haven't combined it yet, all you know are what the ingredients are and what the percentage chance of combining it is. So you can see here uh, that's what a demon drug and a medium monster bone and the combined percentage is 55% so you'll probably want to equip some chainmail armor if you're trying to make that unless you have all five of the combined books. Now the fourth one down, this is your quest info. The top section is going to be the name of the quest. The second section is going to be the quest objectives. In this case, I have to deliver a feline paw pass ticket. And finally, the bottom part shows the total quest reward possible, the current quest reward, and finally, the time remaining. The fifth option is your cat menu. So the top selection gives you an overview of your cat's statistics. Uh, right here is Cha-Cha. I don't have a full translation of all these parts yet, but there are some things I can share. Uh, the very top part, that's your cat's level. A higher level gives access to more powerful cat skills, which you can unlock. Uh, the next is the hearts and the numbers below them. Uh, the hearts indicate your cat's loyalty. So it's kind of like Cha-Cha. He had a certain uh, loyalty amount. I think it was, you know, he had courage and level. Um, the more loyal your cat is, though, it's the more active they're going to be in gathering, fighting, and using their various skills. And for those numbers, I believe the top one signifies the attack power, whereas the bottom one signifies your defense. And then um, as for the rest of the untranslated things, uh, I think those probably determine your cat's various attitudes towards attack. Uh, generally, they have a, a pretty ver wide variety of attacks. I think there's pacifist, which you won't attack at all, to some sort of mix of bombs and melee attacks to finally uh, sort of a cats that only use bombs or only use melee attacks or maybe even cats that only use skills. Um, we'll know more once things have been more fully translated. And as you can see at the bottom, you can actually change your cat's little tagline. Uh, we'll go more into that later. And then uh, you can also s flip through this one option. You can see some various details like uh, the second page is just your various equipment that you've had your, you have your cat equipped with. The third page is the amount of points he has to use on skills and the skills that you have equipped. And then the fourth one, I believe, is just a description of your cat's attitude. 
Okay, so second option down is to look over your cat's equipment in more detail. Uh, going clockwise from the top left, uh, we have what attack power. And uh, top right is whether it's a cutting weapon or an impact weapon. In this case, that's the symbol for cutting. Uh, bottom right is the affinity, so that's cat's a chance to do a critical hit. And then the bottom left is the sharpness. Uh, as for the armor, let me keep going through my... I, I wrote a script for this, if you couldn't tell. Uh, top left is... Well, the top top left is the amount of defense that that part gives. But otherwise, going from top left in terms of those boxes there, that's the various resistances that the equipment has. And the top left is fire. Top right is thunder. Bottom left is water. And the bottom right is ice. And then in the far corner, that is the resistance for dragon. And again, as far as we know, uh, giving your cats different armor pieces also changes their attitudes towards fighting as well. And then these next two options, I think we can only go to outside of the actual quest. So we'll go through that later. On this bottom option here, this is just pause. Useful if you need to take a break or something and you're in single player. Okay, so going to the second page. Page two, the very top, we have your status screen. Now, the left section is the sort of feline skills you already have. Uh, I didn't drink anything before this quest, so that's actually Japanese for no skills. And on the right is your basic info. Uh, of course, you have your name and your hunter rank, which you know allows you to do higher level guild quests. Uh, any titles you may have, uh, the amount of money you have. You'll see that's a number followed by Z is the amount of money you have your farm upgrade points, and then I think that next section is your guild points, which doesn't really do much other than just kind of signify how many quests you've done in the game. And then on the bottom left, uh, that bottom left, or not the bottom left, just the bottom section there, that is your basic statistics. So on the top part of the left section in the bottom, <laughs> that is your life, the 100 there is your life, and then uh, right below it is your stamina, followed by your attack power, followed by your defense. And then again on your right, if you're paying attention to the cat tutorial just now, uh, those are your various resistances. At the top is fire, followed by water, thunder, ice, and finally dragon. Uh, I guess in this case I'm wearing pumpkin armor. Uh, it's fairly weak to fire, which is odd. I thought it would be kind of resistant to fire, but it's not. And then your second option is to go through your various equipment in more detail. So if you flip through your attack, uh, your, your weapon here, you'll notice it has your attack power on top, followed by sharpness. Uh, the bottom left there, that is the amount of slots, if any, if it had any, and the bottom right is its affinity. And if this had a specific element or status attribute, that would be listed on the bottom as well. And if you go through the sort of, uh, well, I mean, if you just use a weapon a number of times on a monster, you would kind of figure out what attribute it had. But there are already translations online of what the basic elements are, and basic statuses are for you to use. And I'd recommend going to the Mind Guard forums in order to do that. Uh, this is the second part of this. This is just to explain, uh, if you were able to read this, it would explain what that equipment piece was and would give a little fluff text about it. Uh, the third page just shows all the active skills you have with all of those pieces equipped. Uh, the fourth page shows the amount of skill points that that particular piece gives. Uh, I don't have any slots on the weapon, so of course it has nothing there. But in terms of the helmet, chest, arms, tacit, and greaves, those are the various skill points that each one of those pieces give. This decoration here that I have, uh, this charm I have, gives me four points in expert. And then finally, the fifth page is if there are slots, how many slots are available, and if you've gemmed anything in, what is that gem, and what are the skill points it's giving you. So the third, third option on the second page is your almanac. And in order for you to uh, use this, you need to already purchase the entry at the item shop. Uh, they range in price from 100 to about 1,000, I would imagine. And it just gives you some basic details of the number of monsters of that type you've killed and the various sizes so the maximum size i've already killed a very large uh Aoshira. that looks like what 512 centimeters that's pretty big and but they get much bigger of course 
that's a I already have like a gold crown, small giganox, and almost a gold crown for actually is that that's odd. Looks like a small gold crown, but yet the silver crown looks even larger. I have to figure that out. Well, in any case, the fourth page is for your option screen. Uh, I'm going to have to really thank Middleman for helping me uh, translate some of this. There are a lot of nuanced options here, mostly for the ones that say type, and he really helped go through all these to help me figure out what they were, rather than just doing trial and error. So in any case, the top choice toggles your HUD on and off. Uh, second choice toggles your map on and off. So if I had a map here, which I can get, let me go get that. And I'll, I'll grab the paw pass while I'm at it. See map on, off. Woo. <laughs> I mean, you know, why not just not pick up a map? I don't know, but I guess that you want to have the option there just in case you want to keep your HUD up, but you want to turn your map off. Uh, third choice is the various camera settings. Fourth choice will reverse the camera controls. So you can see here reverse one and two that will reverse either the X axis or the Y axis. No, that's for the third. Yeah, the fourth has yes, reverse. Fifth and sixth, I believe, change the controls while you're using the bow gun. So while you're zoomed in with the bow gun, it should change it there, or maybe even while it's over the shoulder. The seventh choice changes the camera type. And again, I don't know what that means exactly. Maybe it follows you more closely or not. Again, all these are on default, and I prefer to keep them that way because that's the what I'm most used to. Uh, eighth will change the x-axis control type and the ninth will change the bowgun shoulder sight style so if any of those things sound very interesting to you uh, feel free to go ahead and change them around a little bit uh, personally I'm just gonna leave them all standard and if you find that you are unsatisfied with your changes you can always if something's changed go to the last option at the bottom it'll change everything to default oh and in case you didn't notice the very last option uh, it's actually kind of in English is the various sound options. I keep mine on stereo. If you don't have any headphones, you can put it on boost to make your PSP a little louder. Or if you actually have your PSP connected through some sort of sound system, you can use DPL2, which will give you some sort of surround sound style, which might be useful. Uh, the fifth choice brings up the emote menu. Uh, there are um, you know, almost as many emotes as there were in Monster Hunter Tri, but in fact, you can actually use some uh, that you weren't able to use before. Uh, Prance is one of them. <laughs> You're only able to use that in town and now you can use it while on a quest that is quite an upgrade. Uh, but otherwise I'll leave the various uh, choices for up to you to discover. Then finally you have the abandoned quest option which is the last option at the bottom of the second page. Uh, I'm not going to do that because uh, quitters never win. And then uh, the last thing that I'm going to show off is this little guy over here. Uh, his name is Nian Gyro, I believe. And what you can do with him is you can actually put items in his barrel and he'll bring them back to town for you. So you talk to him and you choose the first option and you can put something in. Like, let's do something really dangerous. Let's put my power charm away. Oh no, I want it back. The second option will take it back from him. So, you know, you can store things there in case your four pages of inventory aren't enough. But let's say you are done with it and you just want everything sent back to town. This last option here sends him back. So you can see he's going to do a little animation here. He's going to jump on his barrel and he's going to get the heck out of here. Get him go. I wonder how far we can see him. He's already gone. <laughs> and that's more or less it. That's more or less it for the menu. Uh, there's some more options that show up when we are back in town or in the guild hall, but I'll go to, through those uh, when we get to the Oh, and just a note about quest rewards. Uh, the first choice, if you you know couldn't figure it out, it, this will put items directly into your backpack. The second choice will send items directly to your box, and the third choice will sell all the items for whatever the combined value is. Even if it's just small items like that, I will generally take them. Oh, and this first option that pops up, it defaults to save your game, and the sex, second option sets it to don't save. So in case something terrible has happened and you don't want any memory of it being recorded, you can go ahead and not save, I guess. But that's like cheating. Always.